diversion, take a drone excursion. Hey guys, it's Drone Excursion here. Just wanted to check in with everybody and uh, make sure you're all being safe and doing your best to avoid the Kung Flu. Man, uh, what's going on these days? Uh, some craziness, right? Anyhow, I'm in California, as you may know, and uh, we're on basically total lockdown as a state. We're not supposed to be uh, working or anything, but I happen to work for UPS, and we are one of the, uh, I guess, you know, essential companies that's still, uh, still supposed to stay open. And so, of course, uh, we're still working and we're busy as hell because everybody's freaking out and buying everything online as if the world's gonna end. So yeah, man, I've delivered more toilet paper than I know what to do with. I could, so much toilet paper every day, I could TP the White House, the whole White House. So anyhow, um, yeah, guys, I just wanted to check in. But uh, as you can tell from the thumbnail of this video, I had a little bit of a boo-boo, okay? So I've been flying drones for a while. And uh, part of, you know, doing something all the time is uh, you kind of develop habits. And let's just say I developed a bad habit. All right, so uh, yep, I did chop the tip of my finger off. <clears throat> That's uh, the tip of my pinky finger, and also kind of you know scuffed up my thumbnail pretty bad. I was holding my drone after I just finished the flight, and I, I went to pick it up, and basically accidentally hit the arm switch on the controller, which turns on the propellers. They start spinning up real fast, and zzz, as you know, the props spin very fast and they're very sharp. And uh, I know a lot of you don't know too much about this hobby. You're just here for the, <laughs> the shits and giggles. But uh, for those of you that fly drones or want to fly drones, I wanted to, uh, to talk about this because I prefer to turn something like this into a learning experience. You know, I could have easily just, you know, pretended it never happened, but uh, that's, not, that's not my deal, okay? I want, I want to uh, try to get this out there and make sure that nobody else has this happen to them because <laughs> I gotta say, it really sucked. Uh, for a good you know month or so uh, man a lot of pain a lot of pain and anyhow so I want to show you real quick what happened and how you can avoid it okay I'm gonna set it up on beta flight right now it's called uh, you can call it dual stage arming or uh, what they call it a pre arm it's a mode in beta flight and once you enable this uh, it's basically not impossible but it's very very unlikely that this will happen to you okay so let me show you what I did and uh, you can probably tell right away how it happened. But let me go ahead and put the phone down real quick here. Let me show you. So, imagine I just flew and I finished my flight. And here's my controller. It normally hangs around my neck like this. So if I you know, need to let go, I can. So I just finished flying. My drone has landed here. And the bad habit of mine was that I would do exactly this. I would just go over and bend over and the controller would swing out. And then as I would come back up, normally it's fine. Normally you do that kind of thing and I'm good. Well, in this situation, when I went to bend over and pick up the drone, the controller swung out and actually somehow spun a little bit like this. And then the arm switches, which is right here on the top left, it either bonked into my belly or into my arm. I don't know exactly what happened, but I was holding the drone here. It fired up. Of course, I wasn't expecting it. And zhoot, man, I let go of it, but it was too late. Okay, guys, so that was my bad habit. The thing is, you should never, you should never pick up your drone while your controller is dangling from you like that. That's, that's just, uh, I mean, you, you, can, uh, you can play with the odds and you can think that it's not going to happen but I tell you when you fly all the time like I do eventually your turn's going to come up and it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's a sucky thing to happen so uh, really what you should do even if you even if you set up the dual stage arming and the pre-arm kind of thing you should not even have your controller on you you should just go ahead and take it off you know be super safe set it down and then go pick up your drone, okay? So that's, there's no way it's gonna get bumped if you're not touching it, okay? Unless you got a dog or something that's gonna go over there and bump your controller. But but, uh, but yeah, if you if you have that thing swinging from you like I did, that's a bad deal. Okay, but here's a, here's a couple things. I've done some research and not, not, not only just setting up a pre-arm is gonna be a good, good thing, but also 
Um, if you get in the habit of actually after you land, right, and you disarm, what you can do is just go ahead and put your throttle stick up a little bit, okay? All, all the flight software knows that if, you're, if your uh, throttle stick is up even just a tiny little bit, that it thinks you're trying to give it throttle input and it won't let you arm the quad. If you go ahead and hit the arm switch, whether it be by mistake or on purpose, it won't arm because it knows that the throttle is already up. Okay, so what I've been trying to do is get in the habit of after I land and I disarm, I go ahead and just throw the throttle stick up a little bit. That way, even if after I've done my you know dual stage arming and everything, it's still not going to arm because this is up. Okay, so that's one thing I started doing. I got in the habit of doing that, which I think is is a really good habit. Okay, so try to do that. But let me go ahead and show you what I did. Okay, so on my controller, I set up, I set up to have two different switches have to be enabled for arming to work. Okay, and I'll show you in in beta flight how the pre-arm mode works with the two switches okay so um, after again after doing some research I found that there are switches available that basically are easily switched one direction but not the other okay the only way you can switch it to arm it this switch you can find them on there, there's RC groups there's a guy that sells them you can go on different websites it's kind of hard to find but if, if you're really interested I'm gonna I'm gonna actually post a link in my video to the guy's uh, RC group page and he sells them and I think it's like I want to say it's like 20 bucks for two of them or something but it's worth it guys you you should definitely set this up it's 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 a no-brainer okay so so this switch right here that I got from him it won't it won't push up it doesn't work unless you lift on it okay you have to like literally like either push it up with your finger for it to switch or you have to like lift up on it to, for it to switch it's, it's not like your regular arms you know other switches that just you know flip flop and you know are out there like 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 uh like nothing but uh but this one you have to you know it won't move unless you push it up and then it switches okay so that's to arm it but now pushing it the other way is easy that to disarm it you still want to be able to disarm it quickly you don't want to have to push it up for it to disarm but going the other way it does switch fine it's 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 not a big deal so to arm you can't accidentally bump it. You have to actually push it up and to disarm, you can still just flip it down. Okay, but on top of that, I went ahead and like I said, it set up the, the, uh, the pre-arm in beta flight. And so on there, what you have to do is assign yet another switch that has to be enabled before even your regular arming switch will work, okay? So what I did, I went ahead and used a momentary switch and I put it right here, I replaced the switch that was right here, which, uh, which is normally right above your arm switch. I put a little momentary switch there, okay? And it looks a little shorter than normal because it is. I went ahead and cut it down a little bit. I don't like the super long one that is normally available. Uh, so I put a little momentary switch here. And what, what do you do? You have to do, before this switch will even work now, because I set up, like I said, pre-arm, this switch has to be pushed down. Okay, but that's a momentary switch, so it pushes itself back up after you've done it. So, to arm now, I have to push this down and push this up, which is kind of hard to do. Like I said, it has to be pulled up, and then, and then at that point, it's armed. Okay, and then again, to disarm, all you do is push down your, your, uh, your arm switch. You don't have to mess with the momentary switch to disarm, so that's, that's good. So again, to arm, I, I, you have to push the momentary switch, that's your pre-arm. Then you have to hit your actual arm switch and go up with it. And then you can let go of your arms, you're good to go. To disarm, just push down your arm switch, okay? That's how I set it up. I think it's very, very uh, convenient. It works perfectly well. Um, but you guys may want to vary that a little bit. But like I said, this is something I really suggest doing. Obviously, I got, I got the short end of the stick and uh, I just don't want this to happen to any of you guys, okay? So let me go ahead and show you how to set that up in Betaflight right now. All right, guys, so here we are in Betaflight. I'm just here in my uh, car, this is my laptop. I just wanna show you guys real quick how to set this up. It's, it's not very hard at all. So go ahead and connect. I got my uh, quad hooked up here to my USB. And now what you wanna do is go into your modes tab. There you go, modes. Okay, so this quad is not set up yet, okay? So I've got my regular arming there, and I use my aux auxiliary switch one for arming, like most people do. 
And again, I replaced the switch, so it's it's a it's a switch that only goes one way easily and not the other way. Okay. Um, and now you want to go in and find the mode called pre-arm. And here it is, pre-arm. It's right under your flip over after crash, your turtle mode, okay? So pre-arm, what you need to do is go ahead and add range on that. And then you need to choose your switch. So for me, that's on my auxiliary three, okay? So I'm changing that to aux three. And then, uh, I forget the range of it, you know? I, I'm not positive, but, the, but, but basically when the switch is enabled, it'll be in this range. And then your, uh, your beta flight knows that you've got your pre-arm hooked up, you got your pre-arm enabled, and then it'll let you go ahead and arm it, okay? So let me go ahead and save that. And that's it. That's basically it. You just need to have your pre-arm enabled, okay? Uh, set it up on your, on, on your modes. Here it is, pre-arm, okay? Set up the right auxiliary switch. Make sure that when you flip the pre-arm switch that it's actually, you know, within range. If you need to, you know, scoot it over here, wherever you gotta put it. But uh, once you have that set up, then you cannot arm your quad unless your pre-arm switch is enabled first. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I uh, forgot to mention though, you know, you can use really any switch you want to, uh, to enable your pre-arm. So if you have another switch that is more comfortable for you, obviously you can use that. But uh, again, for me, it's, it made sense to use a momentary switch. You might even want to use the momentary switch that's on the, uh, the other side. I tried doing that, but I use it for other stuff. But on the other side of the controller, a lot of you guys have a momentary switch right there on the, on the, you know, the back right side, the top right side. So you could use that one, I think it would be good. I think using a momentary switch is probably the best way to do it, but you could use any switch you wanted to really. All right guys, well, hope that helps. I really, really don't want this to happen to any of you, but just uh, so you can see, uh, here's my pinky. It, it's actually looking pretty normal now. It's, it's probably a couple millimeters shorter than it used to be. <laughs> Wait, can we see this yet? <laughs> there we go, there, okay, so my pinky is, uh, it's doing okay. It's doing all right. I can't get it in the, in the shot though. Okay, here we go. There. Okay, pinky. All right, yeah, it's doing fine. It's healing up. It's, uh, it's got a little more healing to do, but it's, it's fine. <laughs> and here's my thumb, by the way. So my thumbnail. What's going on with the lighting here? I'm not lining this up right. Okay, here's my, here's my thumbnail. So yeah, it's, uh, it took a beating too. I'm really lucky guys. I actually, I'm considering this like to be a super lucky situation because this could have been much, much worse. Okay, these drones, like I said, super powerful, super sharp props. This easily could have taken off a good chunk of my finger, if not my whole finger, just depending on how you were holding it, you know, this, guys have really lost, you know, fingers in these types of situations. And again, I just don't want this to happen to any of you. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's just a dangerous, dangerous situation if you accidentally hit that arm switch and you're holding your drone, man. It's just, you know, imagine if it went into your face or any of that kind of stuff. You just never want to accidentally arm it, especially if you're holding it, okay? All right, guys. Well, again, I hope you're all safe. I hope you're doing well. And uh, just just try to take this, uh, this uh, COVID-19 you know, coronavirus thing serious for, uh, you know, a week or two here. And let's see if uh, we can get the numbers down. Um, you know, I've come to terms with it. I, I, I honestly, I don't know how we're gonna avoid it forever. It's kind of like the flu, right? Like even all of us that have a flu, a flu shot every year, we still wind up getting the flu sometimes, right? Well, this <laughs> coronavirus is way more contagious than the flu and there's no vaccine available yet. So like, Realistically speaking, how are we going to avoid it? Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not understanding that part at all. So I'm just doing my best, you know, to, uh, to wash my hands and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, I already washed my hands right before I just touched my face. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, guys, so I, I you know, I'm, I'm sure we're going to get it eventually and I'm sure it's going to suck. But, you know, as long as you're somewhat healthy individual, you know, not a smoker, that's not going to help you any. Uh, not overweight, you know, not, uh, you know, uh, alcoholic, you know, don't have, you know, all these underlining conditions that are just going to make it worse for your body to, to fight off, then you should be fine. But man, it's, it's definitely scary. I mean, did you see the numbers? I think Italy just now surpassed 
China with the most deaths from this virus. So man, you know, I was just in Italy, what, a year ago, and it's just, it's, it's crazy to think of all these people dying over there. I think just yesterday alone, there was like six, over 600 people that died just in one day. It's like, what the heck, dude? Like, they're gonna have to start like digging mass graves. This is, this is out of control, guys. So really, I mean, take it serious and just do your best to, uh, you know, like I said, don't touch your face, wash your hands all the time, all that kind of stuff, and don't let it get to you any sooner than it has to. You know, I guess the idea is to basically, you know, slow down the spread because if everybody gets this at the same time, then we're all gonna flood the hospitals and the hospitals can't take that volume. They can't take that, that influx of people. There's, we're just not set up for it just yet. So if we can at least delay all of us getting it, you know, get, a lot of people are already getting it, but like, you know, maybe you'll get it in a year or whatever, be, right before the vaccine comes out or whatnot. But, you know, maybe you, you can wait to get it until there's an actual treatment for it. And there are some good signs. I'm hearing some good stories. There's some drugs out there that people, uh, that are ready, readily available, stuff that they're just trying on people. And uh, it's completely curing it, okay? So you take these two drugs, I don't remember what it is, but but it's, it's showing very, very promising signs that uh, it's, a, it's a perfectly good treatment if you do wind up getting it. So that's great news, okay? So anyhow, uh, guys, I just, uh, yeah, don't freak out. Don't buy any more toilet paper than you have to. Um, everything's gonna be fine, but just uh, just uh, stay away from people, okay? Just just watch YouTube videos. Just, uh, just watch me right here through the internet, okay? I can't get you sick, you can't get me sick, and let's keep it that way. <laughs> All right, guys, I will talk to you on the next one. And I do have one more flight video I wanna probably post here soon from Hawaii. Obviously, I'm back from Hawaii. It was a great trip, but uh, I'm gonna post that soon, okay? All right, guys, that's about it. I just want y'all to be safe. Do what you gotta do, you know, don't get the coronavirus and don't chop off your fingers. That's about it. This is a safety video, really. It's just a safety video. I care, okay, because I care. I really do. All right, guys, see you on the next one. All right, bye.